Hey everyone. There was a recent video that made the rounds on social media and roundly outraged a lot of people. And there have since been some developments. I'm going to take you first to the sunny afternoon of June 20th, where a DoorDash driver in Jasper, Alabama had just pulled into a parking spot at a local McDonald's to run inside and pick up his client's order. Now, our main character fully admits that he turned the wrong way into this parking spot, having entered from the other parking lot entrance and not realizing it was one of those 45 degree angled spots that only makes for a convenient turn in if you're going a certain direction. So he was in the opposite lane here, realized what this parking spot was, swung wide to make it into the space, right? Not really a big deal, wasn't a crowded parking lot by any means, didn't hit anyone or almost hit anyone. There was no indication, is what I'm getting at, as he turned his car off, that there would be any kind of issues with anyone. Only moments later, what appears to be a raging lunatic starts screaming obscenities and slurs out of his truck window, at which point he pulls his phone out and records the following video. Make a fool of yourself. Come on, buddy. I don't care what I did. Do not threaten. I don't me. care either. I will Go give this to the cops. Dumb, dumb. I will give this to the cops. Go ahead, dumb Touch shit. Me. Go ahead, you got dumb. Yo. And now, you know what? Yeah, yeah you just assaulted right. me. I will assault you some more. Well, well, you what you really? got that phone around? You got that face? You got time. One more time. One more time for other people. No? Oh, that's your goddamn dumbass. You don't know how to drive. Thank you. A man comes aggressively walking out of his white Silverado truck, making a beeline for our main character barefoot and broken toothed to scream obscenities, and even what looks like smacking our main character, or at least his phone at one point, all because he didn't like the way our main character swung into this parking space. Now what I had to censor for YouTube here is that this man referred to our main character as the F-slur, twice in fact. And given that our main character does actually identify himself as a gay man, that only added insult to injury. So later that evening on June 20th, our main character, whose name by the way is Joe, posted this on Facebook with a caption that read, anyone know this guy? I guess he decided to be famous today. I turned the wrong direction into a parking spot in McDonald's and set this guy into a rage. He jumped out of his car and barreled toward me, screaming hate comments, so I started recording. He then proceeds to assault me physically and further threaten me. His language would also further display that his crime was hate-related. Cops are on the way. He also hashtagged hate crime here, so he himself evidently believed and felt that he was targeted, at least in part, by his uh, for his homosexuality here. Anyway, as I said before, Joe did call the police. And here's where things start getting truly ridiculous, because when they showed up, even though he had video of both the incident and the guy's license plate uh, there on his phone, the Jasper Police Department told him that because the license plates were outside of their jurisdiction, there was essentially nothing they could do, and additionally refused to offer the name associated with the license plate, a facet of this case that many people following along found absurd. They suggested, instead, that Joe head down to the magistrate's office and ask them to take out a warrant on this man, but also, as I mentioned, refused to identify the man for Joe so that he could effectively do so. So when Joe went to the magistrate and attempted to follow the police advice he'd been given, he was stonewalled for not knowing the man's full name. He returned home and posted this video to Facebook to see if the Jasper, Alabama community might be able to help him figure out who this guy was. And boy, did they ever. A flood of shares, messages, and replies quickly identified the man in question as, I kid you not, Michael Myers. That's his actual, real name. And aside from his extremely cringy edgelord posts about how he does what he wants because he can fight and all other manner of stuff that you'd frankly expect from a guy like this, we also saw several comments made by people who claim to know him. For one thing, this comment that claims he has some serious drug problems, which were kind of visible from the state of his teeth, right? But also that he doesn't own a car, insinuating that this may have actually been a stolen truck he was driving around. 
And Joe left an interesting comment here that seems to substantiate that idea, saying that despite police not telling him the name the license plate was attached to, it came up as an elderly man with a handicap placard that most certainly did not fit Michael's physical profile. So maybe this was why the Jasper police didn't give him the name. They knew it was the wrong one, right? And they didn't want to set him down this crusade against the wrong uh, handicapped old guy. But she also claims that this guy is, in fact, a Jasper resident. And he went to Jasper High and lists it as his location on his Facebook profile. So that turned out to be true as well. I'm saying this because her comment was before he was found and all these pages were exposed, right? And she also claims that Jasper PD, this is fascinating, know exactly who this guy is and where he lives because he's been arrested so many times. So were they protecting this guy for some reason? He doesn't seem like the kind of guy who has like friends in high places. Maybe the specific officers who responded on this call were new and didn't know who this guy was yet. Okay, so fast forward to June 27th. Tizzy Ent, who is one of TikTok's uh, so-called Karen hunters, right? I brought him up a couple times on this channel before with uh, Dinesh or Donish. He made a video about this guy as well, a follow-up to a previous video where he'd asked the people of Jasper to identify this man. And in this one, he exposed a strange message he'd been sent by an account calling itself Big Boy 84 Because, of course, this guy's nickname for himself on the internet is Big Boy. The message was riddled with profanity and more F slurs and criminally unpunctuated. It said something like, now I'm going to do my best here. How about before you start talking shit about everybody that you don't know the damn thing that you wasn't even effing there, you dumbass. How about you effing start learning the actual facts before you come on Facebook posting this goddamn shit. Don't worry, it'll be taking down for that little F ass mother F to you little F. Huh. So Tizzy apparently showed this to the police as soon as he got it. And finally, seven days after the incident had happened, they seemed to have decided this serial offender was worth pursuing because later that evening, again, this is June 27th now, the Jasper Police Department, in what appeared to be a wholly unwarranted uh, self-congratulatory tone, posted this update to Facebook. It read, on Thursday, Jasper Police arrested Michael Myers related to an incident that occurred recently in the city. After tips from the public identified Myers, the victim obtained a warrant for harassment from the city magistrate, and Jasper police arrested him on those charges and two outstanding warrants for failure to appear. He is currently in the Jasper City Jail. We are grateful to the public for their assistance in identifying Myers quickly. Additional charges are expected to be filed. So, Michael Myers serial nuisance, local menace, perpetrator of assault, known bigot, and possible car thief, has been arrested and charged. And not just for the harassment warrant on Joe's behalf, mind you, but apparently he had two other outstanding warrants as well for other crimes. Begs the question why they didn't go find this guy when they saw the video in the first place. I also found record that he was booked into Walker County Jail on July 1st for something called UPOM 2nd, which stands for uh, Second Degree Possession of Marijuana. Now, I'm a 29-year-old YouTuber from California, mind you, so don't think that I think that anyone should be getting in trouble over smoking marijuana, but it is just another charge on his rap sheet, and if anyone is going to be arrested for marijuana, at least it's him, I guess? Like, the guy needs some jail time, is what I'm saying. I think we can all agree on that. But hopefully this means Michael's reign of terror is over in Jasper, Alabama, at least for now. We hope whomever's car he possibly stole, apparently a disabled old man, gets his property back. And we wish Michael Myers a very annoying and uncomfortable experience in jail. Finally, I'll leave you with the interesting tea I found in the comments section of Jasper PD's post about arresting Michael on which he appears to be commenting from a second Facebook account he created after deleting his main account, the one I showed you earlier. 
A guy named Joshua tags a girl named Brittany, which I found out through more comment research on all of these posts, is an ex-girlfriend of Michael's. One of the many that apparently contacted Tizzy, from what Tizzy says, uh, they all had very bad things to say about him. Now keep in mind, this was from a week ago, so July 5th, after Michael had already been exposed, charged, and arrested. He responds by saying, whatever you know, what you use to be so you don't have any room to talk. And here's where you can really tell it's him, right? Because you'll notice he doesn't use any sort of punctuation of any kind. It's just a single run-on sentence that's barely literate, like his message to Tizzy. Joshua responds by saying, you do realize I have never personally spoken to you a day in my life. I literally don't even really know you besides you dated Brittany. So I find it kind of creepy that you know so much about me, someone you hardly know and have never even spoken to a day in your life. But anyway, I haven't partied or done drugs in over 12 years. I actually grew up and got married, had a family and got my life together. There comes a time when you, what's the word, grow up and leave the drugs and partying behind. Oh well, some people never do. Grow up, bud. Okay, I'm gonna leave this one there. Coming soon, I have a big update on skirt puller Steakhouse Karen. Uh, we've got some info on the Rod Snapper HOA president guy from uh, this last week's video on PFU, and a dramatic TikTok back and forth over a sibling who suddenly, supposedly, stole her sister's car during the procession of burying her father. Please leave me a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the show, and I'll see you soon. Deuces!